Hello everybody, this is Tom from the UBR, and welcome to Season 3 of Unbiased Reviews. Today I choose to review Payday 2, Crime Wave Edition, for the PS4. Ever since my Arkham Knight review, I've been looking for a game to fill the void. At first, I went over and played Bloodborne to a Platinum Trophy. When I got bored, I went to Payday 2 for the first time on PS4. In a solution of stagnant, swept under the rug, or terrible releases, how does Payday 2 hold up against the overwhelming mediocrity? For those of you who don't know, Payday 2 was released in 2013, and is a follow-up to the positively received Payday. On PC, the game was nothing short of masterful. Great controls, frame rate, not too many glitches, and an overall supreme game. However, the very short experience I had with the PS3 version was not very good, so I sold the game to the person I knew. However, when Crime Wave Edition was announced, my ears perked. My computer is flat out horrible, so a return to the action-packed, stealthy guns blazing heist game caught my attention. Payday 2 Crime Wave Edition comes with certain DLC kits from the PC version already included, so it's already a step up over the PS3. But is it worth the purchase price? Here's the unbiased review of Payday 2. The story of the game is that Bane, a mysterious computer techie, runs a website known as Crime.net. The Payday gang returns and starts doing jobs for Bane in an attempt to find the right contacts and restore their old heisting buddy Hoxton from FBI custody. The story is very cryptic and is virtually non-existent. Crime Wave Edition focuses on 8 heisters in all for you to choose from, as you quest personally to fill your offshore account and level up to being infamous and then different levels of infamy. It's a good system and it keeps you coming back for more, with quite literally infinite replay value. The focus of the game is not story, rather gameplay itself. As referenced in the UB podcast, this game leans on the side of having excellent gameplay while sacrificing story to compensate. I personally don't have a problem with it in this instance, as, for the most part, the gameplay is excellent. Missions have five variations of difficulty, ranging from normal to death wish, and the missions focus on four different playstyles, or a mix of many, depending on what contracts you undertake. Regardless of which you choose, you begin the mission scouting out the area you're in, or creeping around. Maybe you get thrown out of a meat truck into a crowd of pissed off cops. Who knows? It's endless. The missions begin in intense manners that throw you into the action or suspense right off the bat. As you might have guessed, the playstyles are being a mastermind, where you control hostages and think out your plans. Then there's an enforcer who utilizes heavy armor and big guns. Then there's a technician who utilizes drills and traps. And finally, my specialty, the ghost, who utilizes tactics of not being seen and breaking in and out with utter secrecy. The nice thing about this is how flexible it is. For example, I get certain perks in Mastermind, like being able to take a cop hostage and having more ties, while I have a little bit in Enforcer to throw my bags far, and a little bit in Ghost to be able to have the ultimate stealthing badass with a plan. Not to mention an XP-based level system, rather than leveling in its default form, that I didn't even find out about until well after I turned level 65. In loud approaches, getting everybody on the ground, keeping people hostage, and defending against waves of cops is endless fun, provided you have people to play with. On higher difficulty, the game becomes nigh impossible playing solo, which leads me to play online with friends or strangers anytime shit um, uh, hits the fan. Customizing my weapons, fending off the police with riot shields, tasers, tear gas, etc., it's fun. When the badass music kicks in and you and your buddies push through a wave of cops with a server, money, or weapons to throw into your truck, that's pure gaming magic. Payday 2 multiplayer flexes its muscles and puts on a spectacular show in multiplayer gaming. However, this does bring a certain con to my attention. Why is there no in-game voice chat? Communication and teamwork is so heavily pushed in this game that it brings the question of why it's missing a quintessential element like this. However, one can easily circumvent the problem by creating a PlayStation party or Skype calling on Xbox One and PC. Whether you're robbing the Federal Reserves, transporting coke through a wave of cops, or eliminating a cartel member amidst swarms of FBI, the loud approach is fun and engaging when played with friends. Now, this leads to the biggest con of the entire review. Sometimes, your internet goes out, your friends go offline, and you continue to play Payday. So you try to have fun with the bots. On multiple occasions, this has led to my demise. 
We can see a bot here failing to revive. A bot here failing to revive. A bot here just letting an enemy walk into the room. I'm being helped off. This could be the end of it. I think this is the end. Dagon's a retard. <laughs> He's literally the biggest retard I've ever seen in my entire life. Dagon? Dagon. 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 Don't let the lights go out. Don't let the lights go out. What are you doing? <laughs> this AI is so bad. AI. What you doing? Oh, he's gonna get you up. Get ready, get ready. Get ready. Yeah. Kick him out. If you get taken out again. How is he not dead? How is he invincible? Okay. Pull out the assault rifle, reload, and dump it into him. If you guys saw what I just saw, that bot intelligence is just... Uh, I'm sorry, there is absolutely no excuse for that. Let's play again. Slow motion this time. Look, I get it over Kill Studios. It's a lot of money to program bots. But what the hell is this? No, seriously, what the hell is this? Did you just throw a keyboard down the steps and hope to make the best for your AI? I mean, how did this happen? If your bots are comparable to anything, it's the dialogue in the really bad movie called The Room. That son of a bitch told me that I would get it within three months. I saved them bundles. They're crazy. I don't think I will ever get it. They betrayed me. They didn't keep their promise. They tricked me and I don't care anymore. And they are using me. And I am the fool. You think about everything. I don't drink, you know that. Look, I'm just... I've lost so many games because of stupid bots. Whether they not know how to revive, shoot an enemy, or they let somebody walk right into a room and ambush me while they watch. AI? Yeah, right. More like, as. And if you don't know how to read, sounds like, as. Hmm. What do you know? Jesus, send out a patch already. Say you don't fancy the loud attempt to emission. You want to handle things professionally. No problem, because Payday 2 has one of the most extensive stealthing modes I've ever played. You make your own path through a building, be it a jewelry store, bank, or the Smithsonian National, National Institute. You pick doors, shoot cameras, eliminate cameramen, put down jammers, utilize your body bags. It's all a very good system. Little things like only being able to answer so many emergency pagers until the guy operating the pagers realizes that you're full of shit, to your drill having a sound radius people can hear it in. All of these things play into the massive immersion that Payday 2 Stealth goes for. Certain missions put stealth to its limit, and Payday even encourages it for a stealth bonus on missions where it's a possibility. If you are cold, calculated, and most of all patient, stealth can actually be feasible. However, it has a massive learning curve that scares off most people that play it. I recommend that you play that way, however, as I found it the most rewarding experience. Feel free to debate me on that in the comments. Picking locks, creeping in doors, hiding from cameras, and stashing bodies makes for one of the most tense game experiences. That moment where you find yourself standing up in front of your couch wanting, you know, wanting to bite your nails hoping that you pick that door lock before a guard sees the dead body at your feet? Simple moments like this make stealth a lot more tense of an experience, and very underrated in the grand scheme of stealth games. The only bad feature is a funky detection system, and how stupid your hostages can act. And tr trust me, trust me, we are going to get to that. Now, since we have explained the magnificent gameplay, it's time to address cons, and trust me, Payday is a mixed bag of cute kittens and dead children. First off, its terrible AI is not exclusive to the friendly bots. Big problems exist with Payday's entire functionality. 
Bots won't always get on the ground when you tell them to, hostages don't move where you want them to, or sometimes BS spotting systems ruin your experiences with stealth. Then there are little things, like exploits such as hacking voting machines through walls, or a glitch where a security guard won't shoot at you if you're not looking at him. Things like this completely break immersion. It makes me wonder why these glitches are so abundant, and how much liquor the game testers were drinking when they produced this game. I mean, some of the glitches are extremely abundant. It makes you wonder how truly wasted the testers were when they played this game. It's a true shame. Give me that! Stop it, Barney! No! No! Come, Barney! No! Give me that no! Barney! No! Barney! No! 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 However, if you can manage to get over the buggy, useless AI, your experience should be fine. So how is Payday 2? Pretty good to be honest. Its action is amazing when you play with friends, as it pales in comparison to single player. However, the lack of an in-game voice chat makes multiplayer stealth nigh impossible to pull off. The only nitpick I have is that all the masks, colors, and gun mods come through a random chance card game at the end of a round, but other than that, the game is great. You put prep work into your crimes, be they loud or quiet, and regardless of your approach, you walk away rich and feeling good. Payday 2 has amazing replay value, fun gameplay, and quality DLC. It is also one of the best stealth games out there when the game doesn't glitch. However, terrible glitches take this game to a 9 and lowers it to a 7. The glitches are that bad. The frame rate is inconsistent, and the game at all in all looks like it was tested by a bunch of wasted chimps. However, if it is ever patched for consoles, it can skyrocket up to a 9 out of 10. GTA 5, ha! Payday kicks its door down, knocks its teeth in, breaks its kneecaps, and threatens it to never try making a heist game again. Now, I would not recommend getting this game if you have a PC, as this is clearly the inferior version. However, its highs luckily outweigh the lows and make it a worthwhile purchase for a shooter or stealth fan. Well guys, this is Tom from the UBR, and everyone have a great day, and welcome to Season 3.